Hello, what's up guys? Uh, welcome back. Um, so today I'm just going to go through the process of replacing some front pads. So this is on a Audi Q5. Uh, this will be the same process on a A5 or an A4 as well if you've got the same brakes. So uh, yeah, so check this out. So obviously you need to jack the car up and uh, take the wheel off. So before I jack the car up, I'm just going to uh, loosen off the wheel bolts. I'm not going to take them right out, just literally just cracking them off a little bit just to loosen them up. So then once I've got the car jacked up uh, in the air, uh, I can get the wheel bolts out nice and easy. So yeah, so just got a nice long bar. Obviously make sure you've got your locking wheel nut and then uh, just loosen the bolts. They are a bit tight. So now I'm just going to jack it up, make sure you find the right jacking point under the car. There should be like a little tiny kind of a triangle uh, symbol underneath uh, on the sill, on the bottom of the sill. So just look out for that. If not, just have a quick check in the uh, owner's handbook. It'll tell you where the jacking points are. It's always best to use the right jacking points because you don't want to damage the underside of the car. So I've literally just jacked it up to the point um, where I've just about got the wheel off the ground. Don't need to go much higher than that. Uh, so yeah, so now that the, the wheel bolts, bolts are loose, you can just take those out. I'll speed this bit up just to uh, save the pain. Right, so the wheel's off. I'm just gonna move it out of the way so you can see the brakes. So I've got a picture here on the screen which you can see, so the two blue bolts number number four they'll be the bolts you need to take out and then you've got that spring clip retaining clip number eight uh, which will need to come off as well uh, you will need to push the piston back as well um, I'll get to that point in a moment so I'm just putting a tray underneath the car uh, where, the, where the brakes are where we're working just to catch any dirt now what I'm doing here is I'm just going to get this uh, large screwdriver and just putting it in between uh, the disc uh, and uh, the caliper and I'm just pressing the um, the pad back in so what I'm effectively doing is just it's just squeezing the piston back inside the uh, the caliper so this saves me a bit a little bit of pain later on when I've got when I've actually got the uh, caliper off it also makes it a lot easier to to actually get this spring clip off here so this is quite tricky so just in between the disc and the actual spring I'm just going to push it in and then push that um, caliper back and then that allows me to get the spring clip out really nice and easy. Yeah, you, you don't want to damage that. Uh, so on the back here, then we've just got a 13 mil nut. Uh, so I'm just going to undo these. So there should be two on, on the back here. So uh, you can just see if I just show you on this example. So there's one at the top and there's also then one at the bottom. So all we need to do is undo those two um, bolts, pull them out. They're quite long. Uh, they're not particularly tight. Uh, I'll mention it again when you come to doing it back up. You, you don't need to over tighten these. They're not. They're not massively tight. So uh, just just be careful when you do do them back up. So as I said, unbolt these. I'd always recommend using the genuine um, parts. And when you when you buy the genuine pads, you do get two new bolts for these for each side so that's always uh, worthwhile uh, noting now in this picture here what I just want to uh, draw your attention to is the, uh, the pad wear sensor uh, so you can see it's just labelled on this picture here so um, on this side you've got a wear sensor and you can see the, the wire comes out and just tucks underneath um, a little hook which is part of the actual caliper so um, you can't really see it from, from this angle but it is there so I'm just going to go ahead now and, and undo this wear sensor so this is a little bit tricky um, and I've got some more pictures to show you I'll put them up on the screen um, just so you can see exactly what I'm doing because it's not the best angle 
um, and to get in there with two hands and uh, trying to get it out at the same time is pretty tricky. But you're going to need like, um, I use a little pick, which is quite good, or a little um, tiny flat blade screwdriver. It's also pretty good for getting in there. Um, so what you're going to need to do is undo the clip and then twist part of the sensor out. So here's a picture then. So you can see that I've just got a screwdriver uh, inside inside the plug uh, to lift the tab up to, to get the, uh, the the plug off. They do need to be quite careful. You don't want to snap this because um, that means you need a new wiring loom. So uh, try not to snap it off. Once you've got the plug off, then the second part, which is in my hand, will twist uh, for about 90 degrees and then you can pull it out. Uh, it doesn't matter if you break that part too much because obviously you get a new uh, plug uh, on the new pads so uh, don't worry about that too much this is a little bit fiddly um, so you might find if it's your first time doing it uh, you might struggle to um, to get it off but it does come off a little bit of perseverance with it um, and, and you get there but you just the main point is is uh, try not to break anything um, because you used to see it all the time cars are coming where they've been somewhere else had some pads done and you know the way we've been working on it has broken the plug and um, they just wrap it back up with a bit of tape um, after a while the wiring will just get corroded and um, your brake pad warning light will likely to come on before it should do okay so once you've got that plug off um, what you can do then is start to remove the pad so I'll, I'll always remove the the one that's closest to the piston first you can see on that picture there it's got a bit of a spring clip you can see the sensor there uh, and then you can remove the other pad uh, which is on the on the on the back side if you like uh, you might need a, a hammer or uh, some other large tool to give it a bit of a whack because sometimes it is a bit um, stiff a bit stuck in there and it's got a little locating pin which actually sits um, inside the caliper so it actually locates the pad in the right position so you can't get these pads uh, wrong you can't get them on the wrong way around uh, here's a quick picture of what the pads look like before and after so you can see there's actually quite a bit of um, uh, wear on these pads, not much left on them. So with the new pads then, pretty simple. Um, pop them back in place. I always start with the piston side first. So just pop that back into place. Um, it will just kind of clip in. Just be careful you don't damage the bit, any of the pins. And you can see I'm just using my big um, grips, as I call them, just to push the piston back um, that little bit uh, more. So push it back as far as it will go. Um, that will allow for the uh, for the new pads to fit in for the for all the new material. So I said I always start with that um, piston facing pad first. Just put the uh, wiring loom through the middle of the caliper, and that will just clip into place. Once that's done, you can then fit the other pad in. And sometimes on new pads, you might find I've got a bit of a, a um, sticky peel on the back of the pad so that's just to allow it to, the, the, the pad to actually stick to the caliper so when you take your foot off the brake the pads can kind of release and, and, and move back. Now I always put a little bit of grease um, on where uh, uh, the pads sit on the carrier so this is the genuine grease that I'm using here they kind of call that plasti lube and you do hear people use like the copper slick or copper grease um, just, just be careful what you use is not going to get affected by too much high temperature because obviously brakes get hot and if it gets too too hot it will just uh, kind of melt away. Uh, so I'm just using a screwdriver just to clean up the carrier so where the pads fit. So I'm just cleaning off any crap that's on there. Uh, this will just allow the new pads to sit on there and move quite nice and freely uh, in the carrier and uh, help reduce any brake squeaks etc. So I'll just uh, I'll, I'll do another little close up shot of this so you can see kind of what I'm doing. You don't need to go too mad, just as long as you're just cleaning off a lot of the, a lot of the crap. You can see the build-up that's on there. Now you can use a wire brush uh, to do this. If you've got a wire brush, that's normally quite handy. Um, I t don't tend to like to use a wire brush that often, just because it kicks up a lot of dust.
So you can see I'm just kind of getting in there and just scraping the um, any of that build up of brake dust. You can use some sort of brake cleaner solution to spray on there as well just to help um, clean off any of the crap. So once that's uh, done, I'm just going to put that um, wiring loom, tuck that back underneath. And you might just need a little screwdriver or something just to help you tuck it in there. It's a little bit tight. If you are using a screwdriver, what I would just say is just be careful you don't pierce um, the wiring. So again, there's that picture again. You see where it just tucks under. That's just to hold it in place. So it is a little bit tricky, a bit, bit fiddly. Once that's in place, then I'm just going to pop the um, caliper back into place with the new pads. Just need to make sure it's kind of in place. I'm not going to put the sensor back in just, just yet. I'm just going to just make sure it's all lined up. And then what we can do is we can put the new bolts in. So you might need to just give it a bit of a wiggle to get it lined up. Now with these bolts, I would say, obviously use the new ones. And I always make sure that um, I'm starting these by hand. You know, I used to see some guys in, in the in the in the dealers just whiz these in with a with an air ratchet or something like that. And um, you know, if you damage the thread on the carrier, it's a whole world of pain. You know, it's going to cost you a fair bit of money to get a new one. So just make sure you just do it up by hand first, and you actually get it started properly, um, and then you can use your ratchet to just finish it up. And as I said, um, at the beginning, um, they don't need to be too tight. So they are only holding the caliper in place, they're not actually stopping the car. And they are only aluminium bolts a lot of the time. So once that's in place, I then put the spring clip back. So I'm just kind of lining it up ready to where it needs to be. And then again, I'll use the screwdriver to wedge it between the actual disc and then the actual spring clip and just lever it over. And then you just need to give it a bit of a positive push to, uh, to just clip uh, into place. So it can be a little bit tricky, but I found this is the best method. And then just give it a bit of a tap with the butt of the uh, screwdriver just to make sure it's firmly in place. As you can see there, it's all back on. Next step then is to um, put that wiring uh, loom back in, so to clip it back into place. Um, again, it might be a little bit tricky, a little bit fiddly. Um, so it never quite fits in. It's normally quite a tight fit into the um, into the holder where it sits in. I'm just using the end of my ratchet uh, here just to tap it kind of into place. Just be really careful here that you don't crack it and, and break uh, the plastic. Um, it shouldn't need that that much force. But I was just using that just a bit, a bit of a tap into place to get it nice and lined up. Um, and there's a screwdriver to uh, just help twist it round. Now that's back all in place, I can remove uh, my tray, move my uh, tools out of the way, and then I can uh, bring my wheel back to put my wheel back on. So that's pretty much it really. Uh, obviously you need to go and repeat this on the opposite side, um, which I haven't, I haven't filmed, well I have filmed, but there's no point in me putting it up. It's exactly the same process, but on the other side, um, so there's no point in watching that. Overall, the job took me about 45 minutes. I wasn't particularly rushing, even though it was raining. 
Um, you know, I've got no air tools. I'm on the floor with a trolley jack from, you know, start to finish, about 45 minutes. So it's a nice little job if you fancy doing it yourself. What I would say is, though, definitely make sure that you pump your brake pedal before you go anywhere now. So make sure you jump in the car before you drive off. Give the brake pedal at least five or six um, presses. You'll feel the brake pedal go right the way down to the floor probably on the first first press that you do. That's just actually taking up any of that free play that was there now from when we pushed the pistons back. I'd also make sure that you check your brake fluid level. Make sure that's all topped up. Um, you probably would have found if you did check your brake level before you started, it probably would have looked a little bit low. But just check it to make sure it's okay. And that's it then, don't forget to tighten up the wheel nuts. Um, I'd always recommend you torque them up with a torque wrench. Always um, make sure you use a torque wrench, as I said. Uh, it's about 140 newton meters uh, on these. So just make sure you tighten those up properly. Um, yeah, well that's it for me then guys. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.